I'm both pleased and honored to accept this award for my father, Carl Lochner. Um, I think my own father just stole some of my thunder, <laughs> so I might not be that long. Um, my father started teaching here in 1955, and he met my mother uh, here after he came back from World War II. Uh, they got married here, and they spent their whole lives in Slippery Rock um, trying to make the college and um, the community better. Um, one of the things, my, which he said himself, one of the things he liked doing the best was teaching, and he wanted to teach people how to communicate effectively. And one of the ways he did that was by telling stories. Um, if something was really important to him or he enjoyed it a lot, um, he told a story about it. WNMT at the time um, and the debate team that he worked with um, were part of his stories long after um, the events themselves happened. So they were very important to him. Now, as a teenager, my father said to me, um, if you come up with a good and logical argument for something, I will consider it. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> and he did consider it. <laughs> um, how I think that applies is when Jim Wentz and those students from, uh, that were interested in radio at the time came to him, um, he recognized how skilled and talented they were and how much they really wanted that to happen here. Um, and so he, he actually felt compelled to help them accomplish as much as he could. Um, they built a little radio station in North Hall and ran a line uh, to it, and they got rid of the, some of the problems. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so that was pretty that was pretty important to him. He was really impressed with those um, his boys. He called them his boys. Um, his boy skills um, and. He was, they were all hoping that that would carry on into the future, and I, I think it has done that. Um, both my brother and I um, remember going to that radio station a couple of nights before it opened, and he actually showed us the station, and he was really proud of what they had done there. I can remember that was the first time I ever heard a, prom a promotional record. Um, and it was the Smothers Brothers, so <laughs> that kind of dates me as well. Um, the, the debate team was also a source of stories for my father. It allowed him the opportunity to travel around the state of Pennsylvania and compete uh, in logical argument, uh, which is what he really was good at. Um, and he was really proud of his winning teams and especially proud of being considered one of the uh, best judges in Pennsylvania at that time. Uh, when my family sat around the dinner table, um, both my mother and my father um, talked about faulty reasoning. Um, and <laughs> Uh, we, we had to learn some of the things about faulty reasoning, and the one I remember the best is post hoc ergo procuro. After this, therefore because of this. Um, the rooster crows every morning, and the sun comes up. That's just an example <laughs> of that. Um, but I don't think in giving my father this award there's any faulty reasoning. Um, he made a lifelong commitment to Slippery Rock and to his students to help them learn how to communicate better. And for that reason, I'm very happy to accept this award on his behalf. Finally, uh, I would like to say something. My mother wanted to be here a lot. 
uh, to accept this award, but her health is not good, and so she couldn't come today. Um, but she sends you her greetings, and she really wishes that she could have been here. She was my part, my father's partner throughout his life, and they loved Slippery Rock a lot. So thank you very much. First of all, it's absolutely fantastic to see all of you in one space, finally, after the year that we had last year, and that being a senior year. So it's fantastic to be able to see as many of you here, a lot of my professors, family, and friends. This is, this is so amazing. All right. Take right. And I also want to say that Carl and Wendy's words just now resonated with me so well, having just now starting this career in teaching. And I also want to say that nothing prepares you for teaching over 115 to 17 year olds than being the newspaper advisor for two, <laughs> at energy for two years. So, um, just like what was just said, I joined the Rocket when I first did the first moment that I stepped here, I knew I wanted to be part of this amazing organization with the Rocket. And then my sophomore year, I became assistant news editor, and I focused primarily on local crime and SGA affairs. And let me tell you, my students love the fact that I work, work on the police blotter. That is such a popularity point for them. <laughs> it has been fantastic. Um, and then my uh, junior year, I took over as editor-in-chief and during an immense time of grief, and then during that same year later on was when we hit the pandemic. My time at SRU was far from easy, but it made me who I ultimately am today, a 10th and 11th grade teacher at one of the best districts in the state. I am proudly an English teacher to 101 students at State College Area High School, where the day-to-day -day flow of life reminds me of the momentum and stamina I needed as a student journalist the year prior. All right. I also want to acknowledge that the success of the Rocket was because of the incredible teamwork of all of the students involved. During the past three years, here are a couple of the other accomplishments that we made together. We released historic, historic print editions, such as the first LGBTQ plus History Month issue and the first Women History Month issue. We represented SRU on the national and state levels, winning achievements such as first place best of show in 2020 for the ACP CMA convention, first place overall newspaper excellence from SCJ, a silver crown from CSBA, first place ongoing news coverage from PSBA, outstanding diversity achievement from SRE Rides, Rising Star Awards, and many, many others. And just as what was just said, the Rocket accrued over 30 year, 30 awards over the past year alone. So, and especially during the pandemic, which is fantastic, just to have been even a small part of that. And I also want to take a few moments just to acknowledge the many people who have had a support in this and getting me to this point. First of all, my family, who have endlessly supported me throughout all the small and large problems, and they always supported my hard work and my endless hours of commitment to SRU. So my sister Rebecca and my mom Meredith are both here, so thank you both so much. Um, the other recipient of the awards, Aaron Mary, I met him in Slippery Rock too. Um, I just want to thank him for his endless support, and I am beyond lucky to have met him here. And I'm very excited for continuing this adventure with you, so thank you, Aaron. friends are here today and I really want to thank them for making the best out of online connectivity and making sure that we had each other's backs even when we were all separated from COVID and now for our jobs. However, I truly believe that if your friend group can stick together through COVID, we can do anything together. Um, unless Grace over there managed to incinerate our entire d, &D <laughs> campaign tomorrow, uh, that might change that. All right, and I also want to take a moment to recognize the previous editor in chiefs before me that served as mentors during this time. Eric Davis is here, so thank you for that, Eric. I also want to acknowledge Cody Nesper and Ryan Barlow and the late Adam Zarr. Um, I truly would not have been able to get to this point without their mentorship. And the rock is finest, there are so many to count, but if you were part of my small, <laughs> if you were part of the rock here over the past four years, thank you for making a difference in my life. And I consider myself lucky to have been part of the same journey as you. So many of them are here today, so thank you all so much. For all right. To the professors, thank you for welcoming me with opening arms to your department and for your endless support. And I especially need to thank Dr. Brittany Fleming for her lifelong support and mentorship. Thank you for your leadership and for shaping me into the educator that I am and I am becoming today, and I would not have been able to do any of this without you. So thank you so much. I 
also want to thank administration, especially Dr. Zane, for being here today and for your support of communication and especially student media. You were actually one of the first interviews that I had last year when we were in <laughs> coming back this year. So thank you for that. And it's been a truly an honor and pleasure to be at the same university as you for your time here. So thank you so much. note to the current students I just want to emphasize the world needs you and the world certainly needs us right now you are so well aware to your importance to this cause and even when others don't see it myself and everyone else in this room certainly do to have even been a small part of these organizations has changed my life forever and I am beyond blessed to have shared in its important space with you all here so thank you so much um, just as a Quick closing note though, uh, I actually, while I was working a field hockey game this past week at State College, I ran into a dad who was wearing a SRU field hockey hat. Aaron was there too, so he, <laughs> he can vouch that this is a true story. <laughs> um, so I asked him, hey, I like your hat. Where, uh, how did you get it? And his daughter's going to be a ver has verbally committed to attending here and playing on the field hockey team. And one of the questions he asked me was, would you change anything about your time here at SRU? Um, I thought about it for a second, and the only thing that could maybe come to my mind was maybe not plan to be here during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think that also says a lot that there was a lot that I and the other students here who just graduated couldn't really control. But I really do believe that even with the amount of massive loss, and especially the hardships that the Rocket staff has faced over the last two years, I knew that I was endlessly supported by an army of students, professors, and close friends that made me who I am today. And I'm thankful to every one of you for your support, and I'm even more grateful for being able to take these memories and help support the next generation. So thank you all so much for being here, and thank you so much. Before I get started with my speech, uh, when Tyler mentioned the travel agency. I looked at Haley Potter and she looked at me. And we thought about the memories that we probably could have had in California if COVID wouldn't have stopped us from doing that. But nevertheless, I am very happy to be back here in Slipper Rock. So um, I expected it to be raining here, so it's not. That's a shocker. Um, for my four years here, that's kind of what it did rain or snowed. We didn't have much sun, so it kind of, kind of grimaced, but. Still nice, but I appreciate you guys all being here today. Um, so first off, well, when I started here, I knew the path that I wanted to go down, and I can't say thank you enough to Dr. Brittany Fleming because she helped not only me, but all the students that she's gone to bring in as mentees to get to that point. So please, a round of applause. I know her husband Dan isn't here, but he's also the media dad that was always there for our field trips. I'll never forget DC. Um, it was so much fun, and Philly, so. But in addition to that, I'd like to thank the rest of the comm staff that is here, Dr. Harry, Dr. Zeltner. So many of you guys I've gotten to talk to so far, Dr. Artman, Dr. Strahler. So I appreciate you all for being here. Um, and then I see some WSRU TV members and some Rocket members that are currently out there uh, continuing to excel as young journalists and I just want to tell you guys to keep doing what you're doing you know your dreams are close whether you're graduating in December or you're graduating in a couple of years um, you guys are just doing our duty in our shoes now so in addition to the comm staff this would not be possible without Mike McHugh and even though him and his wife aren't here I really want to give a round of applause for them because without him this award would not be possible So, addition to myself, uh, in addition to myself and Hannah tonight, so many of us, ha uh, so many others, have been allowed to win uh, the Mike McHugh Undergraduate Award. So, this is a wonderful achievement. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to thank my family. I was never told that I had to go be a doctor or a lawyer, and I'm very grateful for that. I was <laughs> always allowed to just pursue what I wanted to do, even if that was a degree in journalism. So. Uh, my parents were completely supportive, and they always allowed me to do that. And that might be because may, might be why I'm so good at technology. Unlike my family, my mother still asks me how to set up their quarter for things. So I think that me having my own time uh, to, to pick up on some ticks and trips and uh, tick trips, <sighs> ticks and trips. <laughs> 
we're just going to skip that. Uh, but I was allowed to learn on my own behalf. Uh, to close things out, I would really like to bring up a story about how I met my co-winner, Hannah Chomsky. So as a sophomore, freshman at WSRU-TV, um, I got on the happy bus. Uh, we were getting to meet President Barry. It was a wonderful thing. I will never forget that, even though I never noticed her on the bus. She was there. She noticed me very clearly. Um, but I thought nothing of it because I was excited to get to meet the president and get to meet other comm students that uh, were in the rocket. Um, and at that point, I didn't know, but I was going to find the love of my life. I mean, Hannah has become my best friend, not only to, to the extent of us working together, but her and I are best friends now at State College, and I'm so happy that I got to go out there with her. Um, and even though I'm still on the job hunt, I know that she's always got my back, and I'm so happy to be, um, be with her to this point. So again, I would really like to thank everybody um, for being here tonight, and I'm beyond honored to accept this incredible award. So please, all of you for the Rocket, keep doing what you're doing. All the staff, thank you all so much for what you've done for me, and continue doing what you're doing. And I appreciate you all for this wonderful sold out celebration. So. Uh, we were asked to keep our speeches to three to four minutes. Um, and I promise not to exceed that limit by at least 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, first of all, hello everybody. It's really, it's really great to be here. And I want to thank Dean Quinn, Professor Fleming, and the Slippery Rock Department of Strategic Communication Media for what is really an extraordinary honor. Thank you so much. <laughs> my dad worked two jobs, butcher and musician. My mom was a housewife. She did volunteer work for the Cerebral Palsy Organization. Dad didn't want me to go to college. He wanted me to get a job. Mom insisted on my acquiring a higher education, and Mom won. So I arrived at Slippery Rock Ambivalent, choosing to major in partying and getting by, by my, getting by on my overrated New York wits. I just didn't take things seriously. So what is it that wakens a person to the thrill of learning and education? My aha moment came on a night in 1978, a frigid November evening inside of Bailey Library here in the hills of Western Pennsylvania. I come in to catch up on a couple of chapters for a psychology class. I settled into a booth by a window and began reading. Then something happened. Maybe it was the warmth of the room or the lighting or maybe even that certain sense of seclusion. But as I read, I seemed to be carried away. The content on cognitive psychology was suddenly fascinating and electrifying. It was a universe revealed. Two hours later, I left the library a changed person. And I returned the following evening, the following evening and studied some more. And many, many evenings after that. The fuse was lit, initiating a lifetime of reading and discovery. And I went from being a C student my first two years to an A and B student during the second half. And thanks to some remarkable professors, Bob Miller, Hassel B. Sled, Dean Barnett, my interest shifted from psychology to advertising. The ability to work in a field, creating entertaining 30-second commercials, stunning print ads, and funny radio spots just tantalized me. I knew what it was I wanted to do with my life. So following graduation, the New York advertising industry was hiring students with degrees from universities such as Williams, Amherst, University of Pennsylvania, Harvard, and Yale, not Slippery Rock. To many, it was the butt of a joke, and as everybody in this room knows, a tired old joke. So in my parents' basement, I taught myself to type 60 words a minute and was eventually offered a job as a secretary at Young and Rubicam, the preeminent advertising agency of its day. But it was a foot in the door. My friends, they belittled me. They asked me if I wore a dress to work. Well, they took well-paying jobs with oil companies on Wall Street and selling commercial real estate. But I think they counted me out just a little too soon. I eventually moved on to McCann Erickson, the preeminent, the preeminent advertising agency of today, where I would go on to spend the next 37 years of my life rising through the ranks and working on some of the world's most recognized brands 
at tackling some of the world's most complex marketing challenges. And what was indispensable at each stage of my journey was my ability to study, to learn, and to think because of this place. President Calvin Coolidge once said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than successful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and dedication alone are omnipotent. I love this quote, and it hung beside my desk for close to 30 years. But I don't think President Coolidge had it exactly right. A part about education, that is. You see, I would argue that ed education is the indispensable, indispensable yang to the persistence yin. Insight, knowledge, the ability to think for oneself, that is the secret sauce. That's what enables opportunity, and that's what moves the world forward. That's what moved my world forward. And I can tell you this firsthand, because on a dark, frigid night in 1978, in the Bailey Library, a little college tucked away in the hills of western Pennsylvania, I learned about the power and the magic of what an education can do. It opened my life. I'll tell you I love Slippery Rock. My time here, my memories, Bob Sub, and yes, the Keystone parties too. I am so full of gratitude for this recognition that it swells my heart. And in the humblest way possible, I say thank you. One addendum to this story. If anyone in this room still questions the magic of this university, I take you back again to 1978. There was a girl I had a crush on, but she was so pretty that I was petrified to talk to her. So, Learning that she had a class in the Eisenberg classroom building, I used to go up to the second floor of the Bailey Library and watch her walk to class. It was pathetic. But as Neil Young sang, when we were strangers, I watched you from afar. After a couple weeks of this behavior, I finally summoned the courage to speak to her. It turns out she was very nice. And with my palms sweating and trying to put on my best Joe Cool, I asked her out on a date. She said yes. We went, to the, we went to the McDonald's in Grove City. <laughs> and although the conversation was very hard at times, she agreed to see me again. Well, two and a half years later, that beautiful 18-year-old girl accepted my proposal for marriage. And Nancy and I have been married for the last 38 years. We, she too found her future at Slippery Rock. Finally, we have two beautiful children, a daughter working in uh, arena management at the Pepsi Center in Denver, and our youngest son, who is also here, Benjamin, who now lives in, of all places, Pittsburgh. Uh, he serves in the U.S. Coast Guard, and will be on the field at uh, the Steeler game in a couple weeks carrying out the colors. But Ben recently met a girl from Erie, and he also had an immediate crush on her. They went on a date deciding to meet halfway between Pittsburgh and Erie at a small restaurant in Grove City. <laughs> Magic indeed. Thank you very much. Well, before I get too emotional and forget, I would first like to thank Dr. Fleming for her work organizing this event, but even more so for jazzing up my bio and making me sound much more interesting than I actually am. <laughs> And I'd also like to thank Katrina Quinn and Doug Strayer for their continued work engaging alumni within the department. I'd also like to mention some communication faculty members who were very important to me when I was a student. Dr. Valerie Swartz, who was my advisor, Dr. Tom Flynn, and Dr. Mark Banks. They were excellent teachers who inspired me to always do my best and to be a lifelong learner. And I want to thank my parents for being here today and for making many sacrifices to send me and my brothers to college. And to thank you for honoring my request and bringing my niece Riley today so she can be a part of the celebration. And both of Riley's mom parents also went to Slippery Rock, so we definitely kept it in the family. And I'm very humbled to have four of my friends here today who have been by my side for over two decades. Kerrigan, Tara, Missy, and Robin. 
Thank you for making me laugh every single day and for helping me to not take myself too seriously. And I'd also like to mention that there are all Slippery Rock alumni, and now Tara and Robin are both parents of Slippery Rock students, and the Emma, Tara's daughter, is here today to celebrate with me. Oh. I was thinking about the fact that I'm being inducted into a media hall of fame when my career hasn't been in media. But, however, this speaks to the fact that a communication degree doesn't fit into a defined box. The skills I learned as a student allowed me to explore many different options in the field, and I'm honored that my path has taken me to a career in higher education. Thank you again for this honor. I, I love Slippery Rock, and, and I'm beyond grateful to be a special part of this department, and I will do my best to continue representing the department and the university and give back to a school that has given so much to me. So thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there to accept this in person. I hope to make it back to SRU sometime in the near future. But in the meantime, someone please help themselves to my share of the dessert buffet. You right there. You. Don't be shy. You know you want another cookie. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank the SRU Communication Department and my fellow alumni for awarding me with this honor. I'm proud to be a Slippery Rock graduate, and I'm truly flattered and grateful to share a space with so many successful Slippery Rock alumni. I'd also like to offer my congratulations to the other Hall of Fame inductees. I hope our paths cross in person someday. I can honestly say I would not be where I am today if I didn't attend SRU. I've had an interest in television and media for as long as I can remember but I never considered it for a career until I came to SRU. I actually added my freshman year as a computer science major, but after me and some friends got involved at the TV station, I discovered the path I wanted to take toward my degree. Not to mention those early computer science classes weren't going very well for me at all. <laughs> Coding was not my thing. It got ugly. <laughs> but part of college is figuring out your strengths and your weaknesses. So. I changed my major to journalism, and I kept working with my friends on our late night talk show over at the TV station. I had a blast working with them every day as we all learned how to produce and write a TV show and manage a team together. Then, by chance, a television producer named Mikey Glazer came upon our show's website, and I began corresponding with him. That led to him hiring me for my first job in Los Angeles. And then through a combination of opportunity, preparation, and luck, here we are, 15 years later. Uh, but beyond the campus TV station, I also had the privilege to learn from the great SRU faculty. I'd like to thank you all, especially Dr. Zeltner, Dr. Chase, and Dr. Harry, for always encouraging me and instilling in me that I could have a career in media. And Dr. Harry, even though I'm not a journalist, you'll be proud to know that I try to avoid making major fact errors as much as possible in my everyday life. I'd also like to thank my fiance Aubrey and son Malcolm for their constant support and love. They're actually standing right off to the side here, but I'm gonna thank them as if they were out with you in the audience. I'll be home soon, guys. <laughs> in closing, I once again thank you so much for this award. I'm, I'm truly flattered and I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody has a blast this homecoming weekend. And I hope to join you all in person next year. Bye. So we have a lot of communications majors here, right? Raise your hand. Is there anything worse than following a guy with that voice? <laughs> no. No. I almost want to bring him back up here and say, Bob, read these points. <laughs> Boy, as soon as I met him, I didn't even know. We had a mutual friend in Brad Jones who played uh, football at, uh, in uh, Beaver County, and, and, and Bob called lots of games for Brad. Brad I hired as a production assistant about 30 years ago, and is now back in Pittsburgh doing lots of great TV and everything. Guys who are about to graduate, mark that name down, Brad Jones. Yeah. He's in Pittsburgh doing a lot of stuff, three lines, flaws, and everything. Um, I'm honored. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond honored. Um, I, I read some of the resumes and the accomplishments of, of my fellow Hall of Fame inductees, 
I met Kevin and Mara. I don't know if I got the right guy up here. <laughs> I mean, it, it's impressive. They are real impressive, but I was so proud when I read that to see, you know, what Slippery Rock alumni were doing, you know, in, in the world. You know, you get away, you, you, you move to a city, I'm in Atlanta, you marry, you raise kids. Um, you just get a little bit away, you know, thankfully this brought me back, but you do get a little bit away, and, and then when you see that, you realize, oh, wow. Slip Rock's really putting some people into the world, putting some people into you know, big cities and big jobs, places like Carnegie Mellon and McCann, sorry, and, and McCann Worldwide. I mean, these are, I, I, I talked to Kevin, I, I think I applied for a job with Kevin when I graduated from Slippery Rock. I mean, these are, these are players in the industry that you all are studying for. So make contacts, get names, you know, talk to these, talk to these folks. Um, but I always told my kids, hard work, leads to opportunity, leads to choices. Hard work, opportunity, choices. And I never knew exactly where that mindset came from until I was challenged to kind of start putting some thoughts together for this award. And I'll tell you a little secret. Some, recent, some, some folks that are in school right now, you know, getting in college is tricky, it's tough to navigate and everything. I wasn't accepted at Slippery Rock coming out of high school. I wasn't accepted at Slippery Rock coming out of high school. I was a high school student who thought I was gonna be a big time college basketball player, you know? Until I realized I'm 6'2", 180, you know? <laughs> Good little jump shot, but not much else. And I, and I wasn't accepted, but I was accepted at Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock threw a challenge to me. And I think it's, I think it's akin to today's, you know, getting maybe getting delayed for college admission. But Slippery Rock told my parents, he needs to go to community college. And they, they gave me a number. They said to get a 3.5 or 8 point average at a community college, and then we'll accept them. So they, they kind of threw the challenge out there for hard work. I went to Middlesex Community College in New Jersey, where, I, where, I, where I'm from. Got my 3.5 and started at Slippery Rock in January, which is a little tricky because you know, everyone's kind of here and started, and you're kind of coming in a little bit late, and everything, a kid from New Jersey to rural Pennsylvania. There's some, there's some challenges. You know, there's some challenges. but. That challenge that Slippery Rock put forth to work hard presented opportunities here. I started taking pictures at the rocket. I started writing stories. I started selling ads. Next thing I know, I'm the advertising business manager and they offer me a scholarship. That hard work in that semester at Middlesex Community College then led to a great internship program by Dr. William Barnett, which was a fabulous activist, sorry. <laughs> fabulous program that Dr. Barnett kind of foresaw. I did an internship, he got me placed in, in an advertising position at Macy's in New York. 20 or 30 interns, sit, or interns with me, Seton Hall, Rutgers, Princeton. One kid out of that 30 kids got a job offer and it was me. It was the Slippery Rock, right? So we talked about that, Kevin. You can kind of forge your way, you know what I mean? Some people, Slippery Rock, what's in the name? But when they look into it, and when you kind of write your own kind of script, if you will, you can change that narrative. Not that the narrative is that bad. Slip Rock has a great reputation, but sometimes you have to work a little bit harder. And finally, a little TV production studio. My wife, Kristen, and I ran by there today. I, I don't know what it is now. It's, it was off Main Street. It opened my senior year, and I thought I was going to take this job in advertising, and this little TV production, another opportunity, kind of opened, and we had complete access to it. Dr. Bruce Russell, I talked to Dr. Fleming, I think he's still around a little bit. I mean, we were in there two, three, five in the morning. We had keys to it. It was the first year of operation. So we, we were free. And that's when that planted that seed of, of, of television. So they challenged me for hard work. They gave me opportunities here. And like I told my children, I tell my children to this day, is it provided choices. <laughs> had a job offer from Macy's New York, chose not to accept it, moved to Atlanta. Worked at a public broadcast television station. You know, I, I learned enough here at the TV station I could run camera and teleprompter. And a few years later, got on with CNN. Worked at CNN for a few years, uh, an opportunity, again, opportunity, hard work, all right? Hard work, opportunity, choice. I made a choice and went to work for the CBS affiliate in Atlanta. It's a pretty good sized market for a kid a year out of college. From there, with ESPN, went to work for some other production companies. And six years ago, I started my own production company. I finally figured, I'm kind of doing it at this level, just put your name to it and do it, which all of you will get to that point, a lot of students here, you'll get to that point where you, know, you, you work and you work really hard, but there's, you know, never be afraid to take that next step. Take that next step and say, why don't I put my name to it? Uh, I do it. 
I already do it. So I have Slippery Rock. I have Slippery Rock to be completely, I don't know if I ever realized it until this award, I have Slippery Rock to, I'm grateful to Slippery Rock. I have Slippery Rock University to, to I mean, I look to them for teaching me that hard work equals mm -hmm. opportunity equals choice. Equals choice. Um, I want to thank, obviously, Dr. Quinn and Dr. Fleming for putting this on. This is fabulous. I, I don't get a lot of, I'm, I'm from Atlanta. I'm still a big Steeler fan. So every once in a while, I go to Steeler games and buddies watch the Patriots beat us in championship games and all that. We run to Bob Subs and come up here, and my, my buddies and my, my coworkers are like, why don't we have a slip rocket to get a Bob Sub? And then they're like, okay, we get it. We get it, right? Uh, thank you very much for putting this on. Thank you very much. I can't wait to do the tour and see what you've done here, but it sounds amazing. I've talked to students at the Rock, at the Rocket, who is shooting video. I said, when did that happen? <laughs> when I was in the rocket, we cut out, you know, we cut out the little uh, stories and paste it on. I talked to two other students who were with the film, doing doing independent films and everything. I'm like, ah, oh, my heart just just warms. I'm embarrassed I didn't bring a bunch of business cards. I'm going to pull there and kind of business cards. Um, thank you to my friend Tim Giles, who is the, the, I think, if this goes out, he's counting on this. He was the one that nominated me. I reached out to, I, I finally figured it out. Um, I, I said, who nominated me? I'm not as active as I should be. Uh, I will be more. Um, I couldn't figure out who nominated me just because, you know, you lose Slipper Rock, you move to Atlanta, you lose contacts. And I find out it was a friend of mine who kind of had followed my career and knew what I was doing. So thank you for Tim Giles, the best ever, unless there's any radio DJs here, but the best radio DJ ever at Slipper Rock. It was really good. It was really good. Um, and thank you to, uh, especially to my wife, Christy, who I can't, Kevin, I can't match you on 38 years, but two weeks ago we, we uh, celebrated 30 years. So. Thank you for, for, for just putting up with all the late nights and editing rooms. Thank you for all the crazy trap. Thank you for raising our kids. And thank you, Slipper Rock, and thank you to the, all, all of the other folks being inaugurated to the Hall of Fame. You're, you're very uh, extremely worthy of the honor. Thank you.